Today, we're gonna introduce you to beach volleyball Olympian and number one ranked blocker in the world, Sarah Pavin. We had her on one of our panels with Better at Beach, where she discussed what it's like to go pro, her pathway to the Olympics, and a world championship. I want you to stay to the end of the video because I got something very special waiting for you at the end, and I will show you where you can go to get the full and unedited version of this interview. So I grew up in Canada. I was living outside of Toronto. My parents let me start when I was 10 and I loved it. Started trying out for junior national teams and stuff when I was 13 and then started getting recruited to go to the NCAA in ninth grade. I played a couple times in high school, but like none of us knew what we were doing. We were all indoor players. And then I played like, there was this like collegiate sand nationals the year after we won the NCAA championship. So me and Jordan Larson actually got sent for our school to San Diego and the top eight women's programs sent two players. So that was the first time that I like kind of played beach volleyball. I mean, I always thought it was fun, but I never in my life thought that I would actually play it. Melissa had been an up-and-coming player and the goal was to be top 10 in the world and we finished number two, which was really cool, especially for our first season together. And so obviously we had big expectations heading into 2018. Looking back, it really wasn't that bad, but in the moment we were like, oh my gosh, we're terrible. Like this is so, the season went awful. Like we finished ninth so many times. So heading into 2019, we had learned our lesson. Neither of us had been in the position in that we had been ranked so highly in the world. So we obviously, it was a learning process of how to maintain that level. Heading into the world championships, we had a couple rough finishes and even fighting through group play, like we had some battles. I think we went three sets almost every game and we were just still trying to figure it out, work into the rhythm. But it was like the minute playoffs hit, like a switch was turned and it was like, okay, enough. Here we go. Second attempt from April Ross. And it's stuffed down to the sand by Sarah Pavan. I just truly believe that even in the, the moments that were really tough and that we could have gotten worked up or nervous or, or lost a bit of focus, that's when we came together even more. And I think that that is something that was so crucial to our success. At this level, everybody's a great volleyball player. But I think the thing that makes Melissa and I really work is that our relationship is so good and we've really worked on knowing each other as as athletes and as people and what we need and knowing that we're in it together 100 percent just just elevates our game as a partnership Pavan is there gold for canada with melissa she plays her best when she's relaxed and when she's joyful and so i think that is something that she has honestly brought to me because I am incredibly intense. And four years ago, yeah, I would not be the person that's like smiling on the court, but she allows me to show that side of myself. And in being able to show that to her, it helps her play better too. She definitely brings that energy aspect that really helps our team function because we've gotten so many comments from people that were really fun to watch and it's because we genuinely love it and we love being on the court together and we show our competitiveness in different ways for sure but she has allowed the fun to come back into it you have to be okay accepting and receiving feedback from your teammate so there are times when I'll turn to Mel and I'll be like, hey, what do you think about my left hand? Did I leave too much in the seam for you on that one? And if she says yes, it's nothing personal. It's like, okay, I got you, I'll, that's my ball. Or if I turn and they hit a ball outside my block and Mel's behind me, I'll be like, hey, I think you're a little bit behind my block, get outside my hand so that you can make that, you can definitely dig that ball. And it's nothing personal. It's we're helping each other and telling each other what we see. I'm at the net face to face with every single hitter. So if I see something like, hey man, when she's doing a cut shot, do you notice that she's like kind of leaning back just a little bit? That might be something that, you know, Mel has a lot of things that she's looking for. Maybe she didn't notice that. And it's not me telling her that I know better than her. It's me just relaying information that I saw in a, a hopefully constructive way. So you gotta put your ego away, especially in beach volleyball because 
there's only two of you on the court. You guys have to share information. You have to tell each other what you're seeing. And you know, maybe she did see that. And at that point she's like, yeah, you're right. I saw that good catch. And there you go. It's, you have to constantly be communicating about things like that. So I've been setting goals my whole life for absolutely everything. One of the earliest goals I can remember setting, I was five and I, I told my parents that I wanted to be an Olympian. And they were like, cool, that's cute. But yeah, it literally shaped every decision I made from that point on. I think a big thing with, with goal setting is that you wanna set short-term goals and long-term goals. I set a couple goals, which I consider my focal points for every single practice. Whether that be, I don't care what the situation is, I'm gonna force myself to hand set. That is a short-term goal and it's measurable. And then there's long-term goals, obviously, which as a five-year-old be an Olympian. You don't want them to be easy. You don't want them to be impossible. You wanna be able to stretch yourself and require growth to be able to get there for the long-term ones. And I think that it requires a lot of accountability. You have to be honest with yourself and you have to, you know, really set your priorities to, to be able to achieve them. My best piece of advice is just to be patient with yourself. When I first started, I thought that I was insane and that I was couldn't figure it out and I was terrible. So definitely be patient with yourself, give yourself time. This is a really tough sport, both physically and mentally. So. Just get out there, get as many touches as you can, and just like, you'll slowly see the improvement. Hey guys, thanks for watching that entire video. Now, Sarah is a very special person. She's an awesome athlete, and as you can tell, she's extremely focused. She developed goals, she developed a plan, and she reached her goals. Now, if you have goals in beach volleyball and you need a plan or you need somebody to help you get there, that's exactly what we do at betteratbeach.com. In our Beach Volleyball Mastery membership, which you can see below, we have 10 skill courses, a 60-day max vertical program guaranteed to get inches to your vertical and more speed in the sand. And we have this interview along with a lot of other interviews of professional and world tour athletes in that membership, all unedited, and you will be invited to them as a member. We also give live coaching sessions twice a week so that you go home, you practice your skills, you video them, you bring them back to our coaches and we'll show you exactly where you're going wrong and how to get more points fast. Come and join Beach Volleyball Mastery at betteratbeach.com. That link's below. Have a great day.